Ratna to Agnieszka to hear her presentation, Mezzanic Afghanistan, a forgotten city on the Silk Road. So over to you, Agnieszka. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for inviting me here again. And um, I would like to apologize to all people who participate in the last lecture and were not able to see the presentation, the PowerPoint. Uh, I'm sorry, I feel I felt very bad about this, but uh, technical difficulties were just beyond us. And, uh, I'm very happy that uh, now we have the opportunity to repeat it for those who, who couldn't see properly um, last time. So, um, uh, Mezainak, Afghanistan, um, is, is, is like the subject uh, which is uh, in a lot of the media. And uh, I have the feeling that a lot of people are telling about Mezainak, but uh, without knowing properly what it is and uh, how um, we can just uh, uh, understand this, this uh, place. So it's good that uh, today we can uh, have opportunity, we have opportunity to discuss this issue a little bit. Um, I will start with, uh, <laughs> with some uh, technical difficulties, <laughs> sorry. I cannot, oh yes, I couldn't change the slide. So I, 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 I was slightly panicking. Afghanistan. So um, the first thing which we can see uh, looking at the, the map is that uh, the most of Afghanistan is covered with the mountains and the mountains are not uh, small, they're really tall. And um, the mountain to shape the country uh, the other thing which we can see uh, when we have a look on this map is that uh, Afghanistan is between like three uh, large and important parts of the uh, of Asia. So from from the southeast, it is connected to India and uh, all this uh, subcontinent. From the north, from the central Asia and the huge steppes from the west to the Iranian plateau. So all these three parts were connected or are connected in this uh, um, area. And when you have a look on the map, you can see that here is like the valley which just allowed or which is one of the communication uh, road which uh, uh, was so important in the past and is important now as well. Somewhere here is Bamiya. The other uh, pass which is very important is here, is the Khyber Pass. This is the, the place uh, which can be used when you would like to travel from India to the north. Um, here we have another way, another valley, which allows the travelers to go to the southwest. And, um, this is very important and will be important when we will start to talk about the Silk Road. Or we will mention the Sil Silk Road. Um, Afghanistan is really, really rich country when we are just considering the natural resources and the copper is one of it. And um, it's important because uh, thanks to the copper, uh, we were able to work in Mesainak. I will explain everything later. So, uh, as I mentioned, the mountains, mountains are really high, up to uh, almost 8,000 meters above the sea level. And they shape the life in Afghanistan. Um, not, of course, uh, the mountains itself, but uh, there are the valleys which are full of the life. People are um, living there. And um, because of the mountain, which uh, just just divided the country, we can say uh, we, we we can speak about the three main uh, areas: the north, which is mainly connected with Asia; the the um, south east, which is uh, occupied by Pashtun; and the central par part, which is uh, um, uh, home of of uh, Hazara people. Uh, the three main uh, parts are occupied by the three main tribes in Afghanistan, Tajiks, Pashtun, and Hazara. And um, as I said before, uh, it's really incredible because the people in Afghanistan they, they do 
to not consider themselves as the Afghans. They're still uh, thinking about uh, the tribes first, and then um, maybe don't know the the, the 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 country where they're living now. But main the tribes. So Pashtun, Tajiks, and Hazaras. And this uh, division is is quite. <clears throat> Can be compared to to, to something what uh, or the situation would happen in the past, but uh, Afghanistan cannot uh, um, had no possibility to develop as the other countries because of the the constant war which uh, took place from the end of the seventies, and um, in fact the situation caused. Uh, uh, huge, huge uh, problems, not only from the economical point of view, but as well from uh, education. People were not able to go, children were not able to go to schools. Uh, the university was closed. So um, when we work in Messinac, we had uh, um, young people around us, which uh, belongs to so-called the lost generation, the generation which was raised during the first uh, Taliban um, um, regime, and uh, they were not able to gain any education except the education related with the uh, Islam. Uh, this is really sad because without the, the proper education, the country really cannot uh, be properly developed. So um, Afghanistan uh, has a really rich history. And we have the sites uh, from the Paleolithic. We have the petroglyphs, we have some Buddhist uh, sites. We have the, the sites which are in fact related with, uh, or which would just give us the, the evidence of the history from the Paleolithic to, to um, early Islamic uh, periods and then further. And uh, because of the war, the state of the research is not great. Um, no one almost can go there and do the proper research because of the, the political and, and um, mainly political situation now. So um, what we have, we have the huge potential there. When you can see here on the photos, we have some archeological site which was found on the satellite, uh, satellite, uh, satellite fo photos, yes, uh, here. We have a huge complex which could be one of the caravan serai. We don't know what it is. We know where it is, but uh, we cannot publish this information um, because um, in a country like Afghanistan, the looting of archaeological site is quite common. So uh, any publishing of the, the pictures like this with the proper location can be very um, dangerous for, 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 for the heritage. I um, work uh, in Afghanistan since 2007, not all the time. I just went there for several months, go back to Poland and again to Afghanistan. Um, in 2010, I met uh, Dr. L Laura Tedesco who worked from the US uh, State Department. And um, here uh, I just uh, mentioned um, a podcast about the heritage of uh, uh, Afghanistan cultural heritage, which is quite interesting. Now, um, Mesainak is, is the part of this post podcast. Um, I just uh, think that if someone would like to know a little bit more about this topic, uh, should, should just um, check what Dr. Tedesco um, can say about this. So anyway, um, Dr. Uh, Laura Tedesco at some point said, Aga, enough, you don't have to work for the military. Uh, it's time to do something else. We are just organizing the team uh, who will excavate uh, Mesainak, one of the really interesting sites in Af Afghanistan, and you can join. So I said, okay, yes, uh, if you insist, I will. Um, the cooperation with uh, Laura Tedesco was really interesting. Um, I just uh, mentioned one of the projects, which is uh, illustrated uh, at the bottom of the slide. Uh, you can see um, one of the um, team members who came from the US uh, uh, Library of Congress, Congress Library, uh, for with the, the 
laser scanner. Um, this is the new technology which uh, allows to recording the monuments, not only mon monument, the archaeological site, everything uh, as the uh, cloud point, point of clouds. I don't know how to say it in English. Anyway, uh, the, the accuracy of this uh, measurement is really incredible. And thanks to this, we have um, very perfect uh, um, record of the monument which is in danger because the lower part of the, the uh, tower is really in the bad condition. And uh, with any earthquake or any unpredictable catastrophe, it can be, uh, it, it could collapse. So um, yes, Dr. La Laura Tedesco just, just said, I got joined the Messianic team. And I said, yes, uh, about the Messianic, Still, you know, we will. I, I will. I will tell in a few minutes. Now, I just would like to um, go and and uh, to, to to the history of the area of the modern Afghanistan, today's Afghanistan. Uh, as I mentioned, we have the sites from the Paleolithic up to early Islamic. We will say early Islamic because later um, I'm not really interested in the, the period, uh, the, the, the later period. So um, again, here, uh, this is the confirmation of the uh, um, everything what I said before, that we have the connection in the area of Afghanistan from the different areas, from the Indus Valley and from the Central Asia. Uh, in the northern part of Afghanistan, we have um, Bactria, Kingdom Bactria, uh, which will be, um, uh, which will have the huge influence in the later history as well. Uh, from the southeast, we have the influence of the uh, Indus Valley civilization, and we have completely different type of the site. Uh, when we are talking of the history, the, the prehistory of Af Afghanistan, we can mention that uh, uh, there is the hypothesis that uh, on the area of uh, not only Afghanistan, but uh, uh, this, uh, the, the Central Asia, um, people domesticated animals and start to um, um, cultivate the, the wheat uh, independently. Not, uh, it, it was something that didn't come from uh, Anatolia or from, from um, this area, but it was, uh, it was uh, done uh, there. I'm, I'm not sure if, if uh, this hypothesis is correct. Uh, probably we need the further research to, to, to find out, but it's quite interesting that uh, this uh, Neolithic revolution could take the place not only from one place and just distribute uh, to the other areas, but can be done independently from the different uh, places, in, in the different pla pla places. Um, what is interesting here as well um, is the, that in the Bronze Age, uh, which you can see was a long time ago, yeah, um, we had the first uh, evidence of the trade between the Indus Valley, China, and Mesopotamia. So uh, on the area of the modern Afghanistan, uh, we found, archaeologists found the, the um, evidence that finds uh, which proved that this trade already had the place. And one again, once again, it was possible because in Afghanistan we have the ways, the valleys, which uh, allowed the people to cross the mountains. Um, next uh, period, the Iron Age, is related with the inflow of the Indo-Iranian people, tribes from the Central Asia. And these tribes will um, create the part of the, or will, will be important part of the history. So the first uh, tribe which uh, just changed the, the history of this area was the Persian, who just created the huge empire. And um, at some point beat the Greeks. So when Alexander the, the Great uh, was, uh, grow enough, I'm, I'm a little bit, uh, um, this uh, generalization, I'm sorry, but 
uh, we need to <laughs> do it in simple way because uh, I, I I cannot this, the, 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 tell you the details. So anyway, when he was you know, uh, ambitious and young, he decided to beat the Persian, and he did. But uh, in this, uh, if his journey, he just went up to Bactria, and then Bactria, northern Afghanistan. He um, he just um, experienced uh, how how difficult. Uh, or, or, okay, this part of his campaign was really difficult because uh, people over there was fighting a lot and didn't want to uh, surrender so easily. Uh, I think that, uh, I'm, I'm not the specialist, but uh, I think that the, the well, okay, doesn't matter. It's not the, the, the topic of this, this lecture. So anyway, uh, when Alexander died, um, this uh, area was taken uh, by one, uh, over by one of his uh, generals, uh, Selu, uh, Selu, Selu Sid, I'm, I'm sorry, I know the Polish name. With the English name, I have a problem. So anyway, um, he was not one of the most important uh, generals uh, in Alexander team, but um, he was clever enough to just um, take for himself or the Asia Minor, uh, the Iranian plateau, um, Mesopotamia. So create one of the most important country during the Hellenistic period. And um, when we, okay, so I forgot about something. So um, when we are um, talking of the Persian empire, we have to say that uh, during this time, some of the Greeks were relocated to the area of the modern Afghanistan. Then when Alexander came, he brought his own people. Uh, so there was even more Greeks, uh, which start to live in the area of the modern Afghanistan. So during the Seleucid Empire, yes, this uh, uh, the unification with the language, culture was even more um, progressive than earlier. Uh, we have the constant uh, contact between the Greek and the Hellenistic world and the area of the modern Afghanistan. So um, even when we have a look on the later uh, development of this uh, area, you can see that we still have the kingdoms with, uh, which has the connection with the Greeks. Yes, we have the Greek of Bactrian kingdom, Indo-Greek kingdom, uh, which has the, or the continue, the, the Hellenistic traditions. So um, this is why at some point, um, when here we have the, um, the, 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 the next uh, uh, tribe which came um, on this area, Parthian, and they create the, the, the empire. But uh, when the Parthian, um, I'm lost again. So uh, when the Parthian empire was uh, uh, taking the, the or, or just uh, uh, how to say it, doesn't matter. Just forget. Uh, we have the two tribes here. We have the Yuzi and Sakas. So Sakas, in in fact, are Scythians. So these two tribes came from the Central Asia, and uh, Sakas uh, went up to here. Yuzi stopped here, and uh, it was very important because the Yuzi tribe created uh, what one of the the greatest empires uh, at that time, the Kushan Empire. And the Kushan Empire is very important for our story uh, because uh, Mesainak is related with this time, this period of, of the history of the, the, the Afghanistan. So um, after, after Kushans and uh, all the, the kingdoms which were mentioned earlier, uh, the Sassanid uh, Empire rise and the Sassanid uh, culture and uh, uh, approach to the history or, or the culture was completely different because they said that, that uh, they, they, they just uh, said that they have nothing to do with the Greeks. They are the um, descendants of the Achaemenid Empire, so Persian Empire. 
However, they allowed the Kushan uh, Arya satrapy to be quite independent. And uh, at that time, in the area of the modern, uh, of today's Afghanistan, we are talking about the Kushan Sassanid uh, uh, kingdom. Um, after that, after the Persian uh, Empire, we have the, the movement of Arabs. And since then, we have the, we, we can talk about the early um, Islamic um, time in, 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 in the, the area of the modern uh, Afghanistan. Um, when later I will talk uh, using the uh, word Gandhara, and uh, this is quite important because Gandhara is uh, in fact kind of the historical uh, region. Some of the some, some people are saying that Gandhara is the kind of the uh, Indo-Aryan civilization which uh, um, uh, took the or was was developed uh, uh, in the area of the southwest uh, southeast uh, Afghanistan and then the northeast uh, Pakistan, uh, Peshawar Valley and Swat Valley and the Kabul uh, River Valley. But um, in fact, uh, when you will just have a look for the history of Afghanistan, you will not find the Gandhara kingdom, yes, or the empire. We are more talking about the historic region than the, um, like the independent uh, country itself. So um, from this history, uh, we are, the, 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 the time, which is really important for us, uh, there are these two empires, the Kushan Empire and Sassanid Empire. Uh, because the all the dates which we have from Messinac are exactly from these two uh, periods. So, uh, as I said, uh, we, as the title said, the Messinac is one of the city on the uh, Silk Road. Um, again, it's not so correct. Uh, the Silk Road, um, in fact, it wasn't one road. It was the several different roads, the main road from the China to Rome, uh, but uh, with the different uh, different uh, variations. Some of them was not uh, um, leading directly from the east to the west, but we have some, some uh, different uh, uh, parts of this uh, roads which came from India, the south to north. Uh, um, as, as, as we know now, the very important part of the Silk Road was the sea connection, the, the sea roads, yes, which leads from China to the Gulf, uh, Persian Gulf. So, um, Messinac will be somewhere here. And uh, it's still important and it still can be said that is the part of the Silk Road um, because uh, we have the confirmation of this international trade. And when we just uh, see, uh, think about the, the location of, uh, of Messinac, uh, it match, yes, it, it, it seems that it was located on this road. Um, I would like to show you this map from um, one reason. When you have a look uh, on the name of the, the cities here, we have the Alexandria, 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 Alexandria. So uh, this is one of the uh, evidence how huge influence um, had the, the Alexander and his expedition on this area, how much of its culture and uh, tradition uh, was just uh, left there even after Alexander's death. So uh, when we have looked for the Silk Road a little bit later, uh, when the first and uh, third centuries uh, come near CE, uh, we can see that now we have like the four really important uh, states and uh, the most important states at this time. We have the Roman Empire on the west end and we have the Han China on the east one. Between we have the Parthian Empire and the Kushan Empire. The Kushan Empire is the country which was uh, created by the Yuzi, the uh, tribe which came from the Central Asia. And because they didn't have too much its own tradition, um, 
they took everything what uh, they found from the neighbors. And uh, at this time, um, the area of the modern today's uh, Afghanistan was already really inter multicultural. It already was connected with the, <clears throat> excuse me, Greek traditions. It was connected with the, uh, the, the culture of the Indian subcontinent. So everything was, was mixed over there. And the Kushan just took everything and um, especially Buddhism. So um, one of the uh, Kushan uh, ruler, Kanishka the first, was the first, uh, was one of the, the greatest, um, um, I don't know, the person who just uh, said, oh, okay, we have to be Buddhist and the Buddhist is the best. I don't know how you call it in English, but uh, I hope that you know what I wanted to say. So um, anyway, um, he uh, sent um, a lot of the monks all this way along the Silk Road up to China. And uh, thanks to Kanishka, the Kushan ruler, um, the Buddhism went up to the China. So it is how uh, it spread, uh, how, how, how this uh, kingdom, which uh, um, was related with the area of the, uh, the, the, the modern Afghanistan, um, was, yes, I'm lost again. It's not my day. Um, too much hours on sound, sorry. So uh, anyway, yes, once again, um, the roads which was built by the empires uh, for the for, for, for the trade between the, these two, uh, these four empires, and the even the, the what, what I forgot to say, the roads which was created already during the Persian Empire was the base for the Silk Road. And the Silk Road was not only to exchange the goods, but it was to exchange the ideas as well. So uh, one of this uh, idea yes, of the region was the Buddhism, which spread uh, via the, the Silk Road. So um, one of the most known site, the Buddhist site uh, in the area of the modern Afghanistan is Bamiyan with this uh, um, huge uh, um, statues which were um, destroyed by the Taliban's. Um, uh, the Bamiyan is, is much more than only the, the, this, uh, uh, the, this big Buddha statues. Uh, there was uh, there was the, the thousand of the small monasteries, uh, beautifully painted, uh, painted. There was some um, Islamic sites as uh, as well, and uh, there are remains of caravanserai. Caravanserai is the kind of the motel which was built uh, on the road, um, on the Silk Road, for the caravans to make sure that uh, they have to, the place to rest and exchange the goods because uh, people uh, usually didn't travel via whole the Silk Road, only for the small parts. They have the uh, short sp sp specialization from one place to other place. And uh, then they just uh, exchange the goods. They took something else to go back home and, and someone else took what they brought um, and, and just uh, take it in the other direction. So Caravanserai, is the, the one of the proof that uh, area which we are talking about was really the part of the Silk Road. So, um, as I said, um, this um, area was really multicultural. And uh, one of the result of these different influences which came from the different parts uh, of the, the, the world, but mainly from the Hellenistic world, was the uh, the influence which uh, or was was the uh, appearance of the uh, the Gandhara art is the which is the first uh, art uh, with the representation of Buddha as the human uh, before uh, Buddha was um, just represented as the symbols like the well or shell or the uh, footprint but never, never as the person. 
Buddha himself said that uh, he doesn't want to have any representation of uh, himself and a figure in statues uh, because it's not uh, the, the statues should not be um, worshipped. Yeah, so it's not the the issue of the main point of the Buddhism. But uh, here um, uh, we've uh, around the first uh, century BC. Um, the first representation of Buddha pop up, yes, as the small first, as the small uh, figurine, and then uh, even as the bigger uh, representation, which was made of the um, dry clay. Uh, when we have a look for this uh, Gandhara art, we can see that uh, they are very realistic uh, representation of Buddha. Buddha was uh, presented usually in the full row, yes. Uh, but uh, the other, like this one, uh, those are uh, this representation are uh, representation of bodhisattvas. Um, so those who just will be Buddha, so they have potential to be Buddha. So uh, when you have a look for this uh, person here, it looks like really like one of the Greek sculpture. So uh, the same. Uh, I don't see anything, but um, I don't know what is here. Mm, so anyway, not important. Uh, when you have a look for the uh, for this uh, representation, so first what you can see is a really a uh, huge realism of the of the presentation of the the, the um, um, characters. Then you can see. Uh, like uh, slightly contrapost, contraposto, so which is really traditional or typical for the Hellenistic uh, art as well. Um, from um, the other um, things is that, uh, yes, we have um, the other, other uh, thing which is uh, typical for, for this Gandhara art and uh, which came from the Hellenistic sculptures is the way how they present the hairs. It's like the, the, the curly hairs which, which uh, Buddha and, and all the other, uh, other um, sculptures uh, uh, have. So um, the art which was created uh, between the first and the seventh century first century BC and the, the seventh century um, um, common era is, is the, the one of the um, illustration of the huge influence which the Hellenistic world had on this part of the, uh, of the area of the modern Afghanistan. So at least Mesainak. Uh, in 2008, um, the government, uh, government government of Afghanistan signed the contract with the Chinese company for the mining of the copper deposit in Mesaine. Um There is the second large in the world deposit. So it's a huge, um, um, very, uh, one of the, um, well, okay, so uh, the huge money are just uh, uh, deposited under the ground and the government uh, who was just uh, trying to find the, the source of the income decided to allow the Chinese cooperation for the mining uh, because they, they, they just simply, they need the money. They try to be independent from the international help. Um, unfortunately, uh, they agreed to make the open mind uh, mind so so open open mind so they wanted to blow up everything what is on the surface uh, to have the easy access to the the ore deposit below the the, the, the ground um, and uh, because of this uh, government of Afghanistan just uh, asked Dafa to prepare some survey what is Dafa Dafa is the uh, French delegation uh, uh, to Afghanistan, French uh, archaeological delegation to Afghanistan. And this is one of the first institution, uh, archaeological institution, which was uh, 
involved in the research in Afghanistan. The first contract between the uh, Afghan, Afghan government and the, the French government was signed in 1921, so uh, for, for the 30 years. So it, it's, it was a long time when the French archivists were present in Afghanistan. So it's not um, surprising that the government just asked DAFA for support in this issue um, to, to just evaluate um, how many the archaeological site is over there. So DAFA did this uh, survey and they just uh, divided the area of Mezainak into three zones, the red zone, the orange zone, and the green zone. The green zone was everything would, uh, was, uh, would, uh, should be blown up by Chinese company. And all these sites uh, which were there uh, were to be destroyed. Um, DAFA decided that, that there is uh, only 19 sites, or they found only 19 sites uh, within the red zone. But in fact, uh, later uh, research showed that uh, uh, it was much more than that. So uh, here you have the Kuhi Ainak. This is the place where the most of the copper ore is located. And um, this is the, the um, the, the most uh, visible landmark in this uh, um, landscape. So when you have a look, uh, it, it's just uh, the Kuhi Ainak is just uh, um, um, the Polish language is so easy. It's, it's like uh, dominated over, over the, the valley when the rest of the um, site is located. So uh, the blue uh, arrow over there is showing you from which direction the photo was taken. Um, so you can see that uh, here is Kuhyainak. Here is Kuhyainak. And here there are the other smaller hills uh, surrounding the valley uh, where, where this uh, site was, was uh, located, where the, the, the city was located. Here I have the two short uh, movies just showing um, the uh, drone view over the, the Mezainak done by the Econom and DAFA. So, um, it's just to um, give you just the general view over the site. And the second one. So the all red zone is between the Kuhyainak and this uh, hill here, when we have the another temple. This white stuff uh, on the on the side of the hill is a snow. It was sometimes it was very cold there. Here uh, is Kapiria Tepe, one of the uh, most recognizable part of the Mesainak. Here you have the main stupa surrounded with the smaller stupas. And here there was the uh, rooms with the, with the uh, large uh, figurine, the, the statues of the Buddha. Here is my site, one of the sites. And um, this is how the, the landscape behind the Messina looked like.
So uh, the, all the area of Masainak can be divided between like the three zones into the three zones. First, we have um, here is the, the mountain Kuhyainak. So uh, the first zone is the zone uh, marked on the blue, is the, the area when we have the several um, uh, temples located. M most of them they are the Buddhist temples, but uh, we have as well some uh, Zoroastrian uh, temples. The other area is the area which is located here in the valley, which uh, has the very dense uh, uh, occupation, the, the uh, residential occupation. So the, the third zone is the Kuhyainak itself with the huge deposit of the slag, because in this place, um, the, mainly here, the, the, there was the first, uh, um, it was the, the place when, when the copper was smelted. So um, when we are talking about the, the Buddhist monasteries, how we know that they're Buddhist, uh, the first because of the what we found there. Uh, inside this, um, this uh, monasteries, we found several uh, dozens of stupas. Stupa is the monument which is uh, related with the first monuments which were uh, created uh, after, after uh, Buddha's, uh, when, when, when the Buddha passed away and uh, his, his uh, students just uh, burned his body. They found some relics. Uh, relics are some, 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 some things which are found, which can be found in the ashes um, of this, uh, uh, of the, the, after the cremation. And um, there is the belief in the Buddhism that uh, more um, enlightenment person, more relics. So the relics were very often placed in the middle of the, the stupas uh, before its construction. This is why a uh, lot of the stupas in Messina were uh, destroyed, at least from one or second uh, side, because people were trying to um, just uh, check what was burned inside, um, what was uh, what is hidden inside and took it because that was the, the most valuable part. So as you can see, the stupas were done from the small stones, flat stones, which were just arranged in the very nice uh, geometric and uh, uh, floral motifs. Uh, part of the stupas were probably just covered with the uh, gypsum plaster and the painted. At the, the top of the Buddhas, the, uh, the stupas, there was the kind of the, uh, the dome, small dome, which represented, could represent the different, um, uh, different uh, realms and the different um, kingdoms, uh, which uh, the, the Buddhists believe in. So the other uh, thing which, which we found in the, the monasteries are the sculptures. Um, different side from the small one to the really big one, as you can see on the photo here when one of the Tajik conservators is working with it. So the, most of the, the statues here were built, uh, as you can see here on this uh, graphic. So at uh, the first, there was a kind of the wooden skeleton, and then uh, this wooden skeleton was, was covered with the clay. At the end, when the shape was already done, uh, this uh, this uh, uh, sculpture was covered with the plaster and the plaster was painted. So all these uh, sculptures here, which you can see, was originally painted. You can see here even the remains of the uh, red uh, paint. Um, this uh, type of the, uh, the, the um, structure, here you can see uh, remains of this uh, wooden skeleton in one of the sculpture, or the, 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 the place when the sculpture should be uh, exposed in one of the monasteries. So um, this uh, sculpture is done of the dry clay, is one of the um, typical thing which is uh, found in Gandhara area very typical for the Gandhara art and the Gandhara Buddhism. Um, so um, as you can see here in, in the, the upper photo, uh, the heads were really beautiful. But unfortunately, because our uh, Afghan colleagues were not really 
um, denounced and the, the conservation, they cut the head because in their opinion, the head is the most important the part of the sculpture. So uh, in such situation here in the, in the lab, uh, it's like the bucket, basket of uh, heads, basket of the uh, legs, basket of the arms. Sometimes uh, they were so mixed that it was difficult to, um, to just uh, connect them. Uh, the, 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 the part of the uh, reconstruction which was done was done in situ. So here you can see another Tajik um, uh, conservator who is working with uh, um, trying to preserve the, the, the sculptures fell down. Um, many, many sculptures uh, which we found was in, in such state. So it means that um, that this is one of the clue which just uh, uh, telling us that, that uh, most likely Ms. Aina was abandoned uh, because the, all this uh, sculpture uh, without the proper maintenance just fell down and um, was, was uh, destroyed in the past, long, long time before, before the, the monastery was completely uh, covered with the soil. So here you have another uh, sculpture, and you can see the remains of the black, uh, blue paint at the bottom of the rope. So we found, uh, except the stupas and, uh, and, and uh, sculptures, we found that the other elements of the decoration, like the, this decorated floor or the paintings. The paintings were not uh, well preserved and without the proper conservation, unfortunately, they, they decay quite quickly. So uh, the part of this, uh, the, the paintings, you can see some, some kind of the inscription. Uh, on one of the uh, wooden Buddha, uh, which uh, during the, the French excavation, um, the uh, French archaeologists found the papyrus with the first uh, uh, Buddhist sutras. The part of the, the uh, sculpture were uh, covered with the golden foil. So um, when you just consider like the all, everything that was done over there, the sculptures, to pass the quality of the, the art, the, the, all the decoration, the, the motif, the, the, the way of the, um, of the, the, yes, decoration, you can see that the Messina was a really wealthy place. Here you can see how um, the progress of work uh, this is one of the Zoroastrian temple. Uh, here we didn't find anything that is related with the Buddhism, but uh, probably at the end, those, uh, we can say that was the altar of fire, which is really typical for the Zoroastrian um, temples. When you can, uh, when you uh, look here, you can see something that was uh, uh, interpreted as the tower. So here is another uh, temple, which is probably the Zoroastrian temple. And the shape of the um, of the all this uh, structure is different, completely different than the other Buddhist monasteries. Uh, when we uh, have a look, what we have, we have the Buddhist from one side, we have the Zoroastrian from the other side. Uh, most likely, we have some uh, the Hindu. Uh, temples as well as, for example, um, in, in other side uh, on the area of Afghanistan, Tepet, uh, Sardar in, in Ngazni province. Uh, archaeologists, the, the Italian archaeologists found the, the uh, Buddhist monasteries and just one of the chapel uh, around the uh, located around the, the court of the, the, the main stupa was devoted to one of the um, Hindu goddesses. So um, anyway, going back, uh, here you have the example of three different coins uh, from Kanishka. This uh, beautiful gentleman here is Kanishka itself. And uh, here on the other side of the coin, you can see Buddha, you can see um, the, the other uh, um, figurine, which can be uh, the god Shiva. Uh, we have the, uh, the, the solar deity Mitra. Um, the Kushan Empire and the Kushan rulers were really tolerant and they took everything and they create the uh, perfect conditions for the development of the multicultural and multireligious society. All of this uh, we can see in Mesainak. 
Um, but uh, Messiah is not only the Buddhism, mainly it was the, the place when um, the copper was uh, mined and uh, smelted. So um, one of our colleagues, Tom, was um, doing the, the research on the metallurgy. And uh, he found that there are several types of the, uh, of the kilns and the furnaces when the metal was smelted. Uh, in the residential area, he found uh, evidence which uh, just suggests that some of the rooms inside the, the, the complexes were used as the workshop for the secondary um, um, for the melting and production of the particular uh, project. Here is uh, one of the two years which just uh, were used for the putting the air into the furnace. And here we have some, some, some piece of the bar which was used for the producing of the coins. So uh, Tom just uh, recognized that uh, at the beginning, the, the, all the furnaces and the way how the, the, the copper was melted and smelted uh, was very effect, efficient. But uh, in the time, this process become more and more um, like the symbol. And uh, he said that uh, possibly because at the beginning, uh, there was a lot, a lot of wood around. And um, this efficient way of smelting uh, copper uh, required a lot of the fuel. But uh, the other one, which is not so efficient, um, is, is uh, less fuel consuming. So um, this uh, is one of the clue why Ms. Einak was abandoned, because uh, um, people just, uh, just uh, had no longer access to the, to the fuel, to the wood. So um, being there on the huge deposit of copper without the possi possibility of smelting was um, without the sense. Uh, we have the evidence that a uh, lot of the rooms uh, included the monasteries was blocked, the door, door, doors were blocked. So this is the other clue that the site was abandoned. Um, we found uh, during our research, a lot of the uh, shafts which uh, were used to, to just uh, by, by people from the, from the past for um, taking the ore. And uh, you can see uh, here the marks of the chisel. So the, some of the copper ore was really on the surface. For the others, uh, they should uh, uh, search a little bit uh, deeper. Um, the, other, um, the other hypothesis why the Messianic was uh, abandoned is that the, <clears throat> there was no um, longer uh, very easily accessible ore. So people, um, first, they didn't have the wood, and the second, they didn't have the uh, possibility for the uh, mining, exploring uh, this, this ore. So this is why the Masainak uh, was abandoned. So you can see that the, some of the shafts were quite uh, shallow. Some of them were up to several meters deep. Uh, here, one of our colleagues from Tajikistan made the plan. So you can see that uh, some of them were going just uh, under the, uh, under the um, houses above the surface. This is one of my site. And uh, here is like, uh, the work of the archaeologists is very boring, but uh, we just try to use the, all the uh, equipment to just uh, do the good records. So as you can see, for example, here, we had a very good uh, uh, equipment for the uh, climbing. Yes, and uh, we use it. Um, and uh, unfortunately, uh, more seriously, um, we had the problem with the lined mines and the other explosive, uh, which is quite common in Afghanistan. Unfortunately, we have one serious uh, accident. <coughs> one of our labor just hit the mine and he was uh, seriously injured during the explosion. So um, during the excavation, we found a lot of the stuff which was quite uh, boring tons of pottery, some of the pottery with the 
uh, evidence of the being repaired. This was not so boring. Uh, we had some uh, stones which were used for the crushing the copper ore and thousand thousand of different type of the object, the corroded, corroded metal fragments, which told us absolutely nothing without the, the, any shape or uh, was uh, just uh, making our work a little bit slower. But uh, we found a lot of the uh, things which were not so boring. Uh, like the coins, like the uh, well-preserved uh, pottery jars, uh, the olive lime lamps with the different shapes. We found some figurines, uh, some jewelry, um, some of the arrowheads. Um, so uh, when you uh, are working all the time in the same place and you find something like that, uh, your day is not so bad. But uh, sometimes, quite rarely, you can find something even more interesting, like uh, this one. Um, in our site, we found three uh, sculptures of uh, Buddha. Uh, unfortunately, um, quite severely destroyed. So here the Buddha was uh, meditating uh, under the tree with uh, some, some people who just uh, offered something to him. Uh, one standing Buddha quite... Uh, typical Gandhara style with the rope, with the, the pose, with this huge halo uh, around the, the head. And the fragment of the sitting Buddha, uh, which uh, can look like, like uh, the photo behind. So we found the different artifacts, which just uh, show us something, something different, yes, some, some different history. And um, the study of, of sight. And um, just once in life, you can find something really interesting. Uh, like here, we found the small hoard of the jewelry um, between two bronze plates. You have to believe me um, when I'm telling you that here is Buddha sitting with two different uh, like human representation at the end, very well um, uh, preserved. Uh, there were some spoons, uh, rings, uh, some, some decoration which you saw on the, your, your clothes. And um, this is how uh, people could uh, can, can understand what means the gold rush when you just uh, try to excavate everything quite uh, properly according to the standards, but uh, you are so impatient to know what else is uh, under the sun is really, really incredible. So um, this uh, happened once in life, unfortunately. Um, as um, for this uh, unique uh, treasure, there was some, some, some small conflict between, maybe not between, about the methodology of work. I was uh, sent uh, as the punishment at the top of the mountain. And um, I work here like around three weeks. And uh, I have to say that that was really difficult, but quite interesting as well. Uh, so we found that at the top of the Messinac, the, the Kuhainak, uh, there is a huge wall, probably the, the, for the defense. And this wall goes uh, uh, up to here, down the hill and most likely was built around the whole city. So uh, at some point, the Messianic was quite well defended. So um, I have a question because um, it's one hour already. And um, I, I, should I finish or can I take 10 more minutes? Hello? Take more, take, take 10 more minutes, it's fine, Agnieszka. I think okay. it will be fine. I was okay. sorry, I was on mute, so I just had to unmute. Okay, so 10 more minutes. So this is another site which I excavated. And here you can see how deep are the layers of the slag. So um, according to our colleague, our colleague it was uh, up to six meters. And the Russian surveyors uh, said that they found the place when the, the thickness of the, the slag was even uh, higher, bigger, like up to 12 meters. So uh, Tom uh, 
uh, just calculated that the, the amount of the slag was uh, around uh, 900,000 cubic uh, meters, tons, or oh, tons. So the huge, huge amount of, of slag. So this shows just the scale of the, the, the melting and smelting the, the, uh, the copper over there during the, the ages. So uh, centuries, not ages. So uh, this is my hobby. I will just skip this quite uh, quickly. Um, part of the pottery was stamped and I collected the thousand of the different pieces of the stamp pottery. Uh, some of the humans, some of the animals with the, some floral decor and decoration. Uh, in my opinion, they were really interesting and beautiful. So, um, we had like the thousand of the pieces, shirts of the pottery with the stamp decoration, but uh, about the tools, not too many. We found uh, one stamp made of the clay, with, which matched to the, the shirt, which is a decoration here on this shirt. And uh, we found the half the, the stamp here. You can see the imprint and this, this type of the decoration we found on the pottery as well. So we found as well something like that. But most likely, this was not uh, a stamp used for the decoration of the pottery, but um, more for the uh, like the, the stamp for the like the seal, yes, something like that. So um, the stamp provides us the evidence of the this uh, trade the, between the different countries and different areas. So here you can see that the, the uh, hunt for the lions. And uh, this is um, uh, this is uh, this came from the Persia from Sasanid Empire. So here we have the representation of uh, king, which is really uh, Roman or Greek um, uh, done in the Greek uh, uh, iconography. So uh, here we have the stamp with the nomads, yes, which uh, just. Uh, show us some relation of the Central Asia. And we have, of course, the, the stamps which uh, uh, indicates the, the connection with, the, with India. This uh, very unique bronze lamp, which is done as um, in the shape of a person sitting of elephant, which of course um, um, <clears throat> shows us the, the connection with the India as well. Uh, this, um, object here is in fact the, uh, the, the one of the coin which was uh, mint in China. So um, we found as well as you can see evidence of the trade between Messinac and, and, and China or <coughs> evidence that someone had the, the connection with China. Um, the, the stamps uh, as the coins can help us with the dating Messiah. So uh, what do we have? We can here see that uh, the iconography of the stamp and the iconography of this monet is exactly the same. We have the ruler on the on the horse uh, holding something. And uh, this coin was minted in the second century uh, CE. So here we have another scene of the lion hunting. Uh, which uh, uh, came from the coin came from the Sassanid uh, Empire, and it, it came from the fourth century. So um, it helps us to uh, give some dates. Uh, all the coins which I found in my site was uh, more or less from, or the dates was from the third to the fifth century. But uh, the dates, um, we had the, the, the coins from the first century C as well, but only few, not too many. Uh, one of the uh, professor from Italy, Professor Anna Filgenzi, uh, just uh, um, she, she uh, examined some paintings from two other sites, Golamit Tepe and the Kafiriat Tepe. And she said that according to her knowledge, and uh, in the comparison to the other side from the Gandhara uh, area, uh, she can say that the, these paintings were uh, done between the uh, third and the seventh century. 
So we have the date, uh, the seventh century is very, very late date. Uh, from from our, our archaeological site uh, finds, we didn't have the confirmation such late date. So um, some, some of the researchers, our colleagues, uh, said that the uh, Mesainak uh, was even later, and they wanted to find the connection with the um, early Islamic uh, cultures, but uh, we didn't find any confirmation of it at all. So uh, here you can see the, the satellite, uh, satellite photos uh, from 2009 and 2023. And uh, here you can see nothing, absolutely nothing. Uh, although in 2009, uh, the looting of the site was already quite um, advanced. Yes, people from, from uh, areas came here to find some nice stuff. And here you can see how the site looks in 2013. Uh, 2023, you can see that all this uh, uh, architecture structure, which was exposed during this uh, uh, 14 years. So here is another example of the progress of work, which was really huge. It, it, it was huge effort. So um, in National Geographic, uh, there was an article published uh, about the, the uh, published uh, about the Masina. And um, someone suggested, and this is something what you can find in the internet, find in, in the internet as well, that uh, uh, the, the monasteries were um, fortified, that all the Masina was fortified. And um, I, I had the feeling that someone just presented the Masina as the, uh, the, the next Shaolin, the, um, monastery, but uh, I don't think so. In my opinion, uh, the Mesainic was very wealthy city because of the copper and uh, the, all the monasteries which we uh, exposed during our work was so rich because of the wealth of the city. Uh, it, it was the, in the Buddhist monks doesn't have anything. They, they cannot uh, possess anything. So, uh, but the, the, the people who are not monks, they just make some offerings uh, for, for their better karma. And uh, I think that this is exactly what happened in Messina. So uh, now I don't know what is going on there, but uh, I found the information that there will be some project uh, for the additional restoration conservation of the, the, the all the uh, beautiful things which we exposed there, not only we. So uh, doing our work, we just uh, done a lot of the good things. And among others, we just try to train the young archaeologists from Afghanistan uh, with the uh, Western method of uh, archaeology. So these are quickly sites for the lovers of the uh, natural history. We had the of course, working there, we found that the different examples of flora and fauna. Um, for me, it was really interesting, but uh, during the, the spring, the not turtles, the other one, just pop up and they were almost everywhere. It was really, really inter interesting to find them uh, on such huge uh, attitude. Uh, here we have some birds nesting uh, below the, the, the stones. So um, Zainek was really interesting, not only because of the, uh, of the uh, archaeology uh, and history, but also about the, the, all these plants and animals. So um, yes, um, thank you very much. Sorry for, for uh, such a long uh, um, lecture. Next time, I, I will try to be shorter, promise. So thank you very much. Thank you, Agnieszka, that was wonderful. Um, I'm going to let Valerie uh, take over, but I don't, you didn't overrun at all. I thought it was excellent. If anybody's got any questions, you can unmute yourself and you can ask Agnieszka directly if anybody has questions. I'm just waiting for any questions to come through. Yeah. Please, please do it in uh, simple English because uh, I don't understand the, the, the long words. Hi, Annalisa here. I have a question. Um, it was interesting to see that amidst the largely Buddhist site, there were still some 
Zoroastrian temples, would they be contemporary? Does anyone know if they would be coexisting or whether they were from slightly different eras? Uh, I believe that they were from exactly the same time. Wow, okay. Uh, although we don't have the precise dates, but uh, uh, according to the stratigraphy, it was from the same times, the, the same period. Okay, interesting. Thank you very much. All those gold coins and the other jewelry that you found, where are they? Where are they being shown? In which museum? I mean, have they stayed in Afghanistan or have they been moved on? Yes, yes. Uh, everything, um, the, the the gold and all the uh, precious uh, finds went to the Kabul Na uh, National Museum. Uh, there was the ex uh, exhibition about the, the, the Messianic as well, but uh, mainly from uh, with the, with the, the, the things uh, exposed uh, by the French team. But everything uh, was sent, what was value, was sent to the uh, Kabul National Museum. Thank, thank you. Angela's asked, can you explain the difference of opinion about how the jewelry was excavated? Um, once again, can you explain, if you look in the chat, can you explain the difference of opinion about how the jewellery was excavated? So, Arga, uh, just, just to okay, clarify okay. that, you, you mentioned that, um, yes. that, that, that uh, there was a, a difference of opinion there. Can you just yes. explain what you did and what <laughs> the people thought you should yes. have done? Thanks. So, um, yes, uh, when we found it, uh, after 15 minutes, uh, there was... Uh, uh, everyone around knew that we found the gold and there was uh, some uh, important uh, person from Kabul who wanted to leave the, all the gold uh, in the ground for the next day. Um, I said that um, in my opinion is not uh, as it should be because uh, we, we cannot protect it. Yes, and why we should uh, leave it for, for, for overnight if, if we can take it out this particular day. And he was really upset that uh, I had the, the different opinion and uh, he wanted to fire me. <laughs> so, but unfortunately he was not very successful. Okay, well, good. I think, I, I think you were right to take it out immediately. The, um, Charles has asked, when will mining activity start and bring an end to the archaeology? Um, so, um, okay, so um, we don't know. Uh, the new government of uh, Afghanistan uh, wanted to um, just uh, uh, renew the contract or maybe uh, revise the contract which was signed with the Chinese company and they said that they will try to protect the remains of uh, uh, Messianic which was exposed during those years. Uh, I think that the, I have the feeling that the Taliban's um, don't want to repeat the same mistakes and uh, they know that uh, uh, destroying the the, um, the, the Buddhas uh, in Bamiyan, it was something what was very uh, negatively, um, uh, had, had, it had a very negative impact for the government. So they don't want to do it uh, this time. And um, they said that they're looking for the way how to just uh, start the mining without destroying Mazainak. But um, I, I, I don't know about any dates, about anything, or what is going on now in, in this topic. I hope that it will be preserved, but I don't know what will happen. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? Because I don't see any other questions in the chat. If anybody has any other questions, let us know. Um, okay, there's Sonia. On top of the dangers of mine development and big danger, is there a big uh, danger to the site of looting of people? Mm. The, 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 the site was uh, looted uh, before the excavations and before the project. Uh, when the project started, um, Ms. Einak area was surrendered by the uh, police stations 
around 1,000 policemen were involved in the uh, providing security for the for, for everyone who worked there, and um, it stopped uh, it stopped looting. Uh, but the other side uh, nearby uh, is still uh, looted. Yes. Okay. And then Jelly Jackson said that she was very lucky to see the Bamiyan site in 1977. Wow. Any photos? <laughs> um, you'll have to, I'll, I'll wait for her to answer that. Yes. So uh, Bamiyan is beautiful. It's one of really the most beautiful uh, places uh, for sure in Afghanistan, but probably in the other countries as well. And then uh, Abhishka, you had a lot of people saying thank you. There are a lot of messages of thanks and saying how wonderful your talk was. So you can receive so was so... a very, very, very positive response. I promise you. Uh, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for all the mistakes, especially yes. in English. No, 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 no. When people have not noticed. They said very interesting. Um, there's just been a lot of um, good... Uh, coming through it's a wonderful talk and how wonderful it is so uh, th there's no need for apologizing for anything thank you i i hope that um it was at some point interesting the the Masainak is incredible place it's really incredible place and uh um it will be shame if it would be destroyed so. Oh, there's seven new messages. Let's see. They say, loved your talk. Very interesting. Almost as good as the... Um, and the people, when you ask for extra time, they told you to take as long as you like. They found it really interesting. They found it an interesting and uh, informative talk. Um, can you tell us a bit more about everyday living conditions, please? It looks like they, it were, they were very challenging. This is Annalisa. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um... So uh, we had the camp and uh, we couldn't go anyway. Yes, uh, from, from time to time, we went to Kabul for shopping. Uh, we had the cook uh, who wasn't cook, in fact. It was one guy from the local village. And uh, for example, for the dinner, he could prepare only uh, beans. So for the first three months, every single dinner was beans in the tomato sauce. After this three months, I really hate being. So um, we have the mice in our place. And uh, sometimes um, there was no water. Uh, it was really difficult during the winter when we have to melt the snow to take the shower. Um, the being, being closed in with the same people all the time, uh, 24 hours per day and seven days per week, it could be challenging. So you have to, you have to understand that, and uh, you have to be be okay with this. And uh, there is uh, other issue. Uh, Afghanistan is not so safe, and uh, anyway, you can feel it. Yes, you can feel it that uh, the mines are around you, uh, that sometimes people are shooting uh, towards you. So uh, this creates another pressure. Uh, but uh, I enjoyed the, all these four years uh, when I was working there. It was fun. It was fun. OK, so thank you. Crystal O'Sullivan says, loved your talk, Agnieszka. Claudia Stoiber said, thank you very much for this detailed and um, talk and amazing finds. Agata Zizbek, excuse me, Agatha, I'm not good with the Polish, she says, thank you, so interesting. Charles, Charles Labach said, Wielke, uh, Jinki. Um, and then Heidi saying, can we do a DNA strip to the site? <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> Sonia will be, uh, uh, how you say, she will be very happy that, uh, with this idea. So... And and then the Charles has asked, are there any interesting Gandhara sites outside of Afghanistan? Yes, sir. Uh, even more than uh, in Afghanistan, uh, in the northwest Pakistan uh, is a lot. Uh, there was the, the center of the Gandhara and a lot of the site um, uh, is located over there. But uh, unfortunately, 
uh, at the beginning, uh, um, like 19th, 20th century, a lot of the sculptures uh, from the monasteries were taken by the British and French uh, tourist soldiers uh, as the souvenirs. So sometimes it's just the walls without any decoration because those are uh, in the museums in the Western countries. Okay. Well, I'm going to hand over. I don't have any more questions. So I'm going to say thank you, Agnieszka. That was amazing. Really, it was good. Um, and many people have agreed. They said it was an amazing talk. And I'm going to hand over to Valerie. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Agnieszka. It was absolutely amazing. So interesting. And thank you for spending all the time. And extra time was no problem. We wanted to hear everything. So thank you very much indeed on behalf of everybody present. Much thank you. appreciated. Thank you. So, thank I, I really hope that you enjoyed. Yes, we did. Very much thank you. So this is the end of our talk. And I, I'm so glad it went off so well and so many people attended. Um, we'll let be letting you know about the next lecture on the 5th of June. So you'll get an email about it. So thank you very much again. Thank and you. Again, thanks again for agreeing to give us the giving us a second chance we really appreciate it and sorry for the initial mess that we made with your first talk so sorry but we had a lot of participants and there was a lot of interest so again thank you Agnieszka yeah. thank you thank you. Thank, thank you thank you very much thank okay. you. good night all bye bye good night that was fantastic thank you thank, thank you very you. much indeed thank super you. talk thanks again bye. thanks so much take care